As a male, growing up in Australia in the 1960s was all about being masculine. In those days, masculine identity was very narrow. And in my case, it involved a mix of football, athletics, boxing, shooting. And finally, at the age of 17, I entered military service. I served six years as a soldier. With the regular Australian army. Most of it with the SAS regiment. The SAS had an extreme macho culture. Where expressing your feelings. What? Or showing any kind of emotion. The Was unthinkable. It was a racist, sexist environment that revolved around violence. So by the time I started my career as an artist, I'd been exposed to a cultural outlook that excluded the feminine in every sense of the word. Being a male meant swallowing or repressing my emotion. Portraying the feminine part of my psyche, the animal, has consequently been a very slow process. I've chosen to express this, mostly through various women who act as alter egos, because it gives me a female face through which I can speak. It provides a way of expressing part of me that would otherwise remain hidden. The relationships that I share with these women is unusual and in most cases involves years of collaborative work. Julia McIver, for instance, has worked with me since she was seven years old. The anima is the nurturing, creative side of the masculine. In emotional terms, it's the true part of a man. His deeper self, as opposed to the persona, or the macho face he often puts on. You looking at me? The anima also has a lot to do with the spiritual. It's actually the Latin word for soul. This is why many of my images include religious or spiritual symbols because I want to portray the inner side of human nature rather than the outer physical material aspects. The Anima series is my attempt to give a voice to this part of myself 